you for being part of the discussion tonight here on Open Line with Dr. Jacob Caslow from Vanderbilt Children's Hospital, a pediatric pulmonologist. Uh, we're talking about vaping and what it does to the body. You have seen it firsthand. I wonder what you tell patients and or parents of patients that you've seen with vaping-related injuries. And then also, what is your message to parents who maybe have a kid at home and they don't think they're vaping, but what should they be looking for talking about that sort of thing? Absolutely. So the first part, what what we tell parents and what we tell kids and what we tell everyone is just stop. Mm -hmm. Just stop. I mean, it's not, hey, oh, go buy it from a, a reputable source or switch to this because no, we have not found that any are safer or, or less harmful than others. We tell them to, you, you just have to stop because you don't know what you're inhaling. Mm -hmm. And this is going to be a little different, you know, than the smoker who's trying to quit who's switching over that's just not who I talk to right so I don't yeah. I don't know the data I don't have the data on who can switch who can transfer from traditional to the uh, e-cigarettes these are kids who are never smokers is what we would call them to now using mm -hmm. I mean that's it's that transition and so all we tell them is, is just is you just need to stop if you and if you can't then you need to let us you need to let your pediatrician know because now we actually need to start talking about do you need the patch, patch yeah, do you need so gum right do you need medication where this gets really tricky is none of these are approved FDA under 18 mm. So we're entering a world that we were not, as a medical community, we just were not prepared for. Yeah. I think we're doing a great job of adjusting on the fly and going with it and figuring out what we need to do, but this was not something that we anticipated. Mm -hmm. We did not anticipate a whole generation of young nicotine users, especially when the rates were going down. We, thought we, we, thought, we actually thought we were doing a fantastic job. We almost had a generation not addicted. Mm -hmm. So we're a little behind on that. I mean, I'll be the... I won't, I won't be the first to admit it. We all know it. So that's really where the danger comes in. And now what to tell parents to look for, that's where we get really tricky. So these products are designed to be sleek, to look... Like other things. Uh, like other things, to look like a pen, to look like a USB flash drive, mm -hmm. to not look like a cigarette, to not look like something that you'd be using or inhaling. So to tell them, hey, look for this or that, mm -hmm. that's tough. You can look for things like nicotine withdrawal if they're not, if we think that they're not getting it, you know, so irritability, headaches. I, I know I'm describing I'm saying, every, every teen. teen. <laughs> I understand. <laughs> Just like, you know, the dangers and the hazards of smoke or uh, vaping look like flu. Yes. It's not specific. It's not, oh, it looks just like this. Like if you see this and this, boom, that's it. Well, that's just not what we're mm -hmm. seeing. You know, I think if anything, it's the same as if you were worried about your teen smoking marijuana or doing something else, you odd behaviors potentially. But again, these aren't altering, mm -hmm. right? I mean, if you're not using THC and you're just using the nicotine versions, well, you're not really altered. It's you're not acting a whole lot mm -hmm. different. And they're not going to come home smelling like tobacco, right? I mean, that used to be a dead giveaway. And that's one of the things that young adults it, and adults love about it mm -hmm. is you, the use in a public place. I mean, it smells fruity. It mm -hmm. smells good, uh, vibrant. And yeah, it does not have that smell. Mm -hmm. And the, it's discreet. I mean, they sell sweatshirts that have vapes in them. They sell, you know, like it, they make it as discreet and as available as they possibly can. Mm -hmm. So it becomes very difficult. And so I would tell parents is having a frank, honest discussion. And not the kind where, you know, I'm here to punish or I'm here to, to scold right. or anything. It's really just, hey, are you using this? If so, like, we need to talk. Because mm -hmm. while it's, you know, you should not be able to buy it if you're under 18, if you're over 18, you, you can. Yeah. You know, so it's not like an illegal thing you need. It, it's just having these frank conversations about, hey, there are some dangers. And if mm -hmm. they need information, the American Academy of Pediatrics, the CDC website, the American Thoracic Society, all have handouts that really highlight a lot of these dangers. And they're meant to be shared with patients. They're in easy to read terms. Good. It's not overly medical. Right. There's not a lot of jargon. There's pictures to show good lungs vaping induced or vaping associated injury lungs so you really can get a sense of what it is and you mentioned just the numbers are just crazy when we talk about how many kids in in high school admit to to vaping and also in middle school now it just blows your mind but i wonder and i'm probably opening a whole nother can of worms even if my child is not and their two other best friends are and they're in a car all day together or whatever what about secondhand <laughs> vaping smoke so they've they've been studying we it, we haven't quite had a term for it yet. So it's probably secondhand vaping, but they call it passive vaping. Okay. Same thing. 
the nickel, the tin, the chromium, the tobacco, or I guess the, the nicotine nitrosamines, the ultrafine particles, those are also in the air. Mm -hmm. So if you're inhaling those, it doesn't matter if you're the primary or if you're the secondary. I mean, ultrafine particles, the reason as pulmonologists we get worried is they're so small that when you inhale them, they can go all the way down to the, some of the smallest airways you have. Usually those are a little bit protected because they're so small and the bigger molecules just can't get there. But with the ultra fine particles, they can get down there, they can cause irritation. So now you're talking about microscopic damage being done diffuse and all over. Now there's even talk of third hand. So third hand would be someone's vaping in this room, the vape settles, it maybe sits on the chair, on the table, Someone comes in, sits on the chair, and it pops, pops. up. Or you know, kids, young mm -hmm. adult, or kid, young adult, or uh, young kids, infants playing on the ground, sure. playing on couches. And if we want to even take this a step further, the vape pods are known to explode. Wow. There's one confirmed death just from vapes exploding. The centers, the poison control centers, are seeing this massive increase in the number of calls they're getting from kids, infants who are getting into these flavored, Nobody. colorful yes. pods, drinking the liquid and getting almost nicotine overdoses oh to some goodness. degree. How scary. No, and that takes out everything that's in them, yeah. you know, the chemicals and the compounds, but this is just the amount of nicotine they take in. Yeah. So it's not just the individual, it's things you're it's leaving out, it's everyone yes. around you, absolutely. All right, we're gonna take a quick break, we'll wrap things up next.